Matthew chapter 26, verse 47 and following, uh, we find the betrayal of Jesus by Judas. Uh, Matthew 26, 47. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, the one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Put your sword, said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and you will at once send more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me? as though I were a bandit. Day after day I saw, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. It's a fascinating image that we have in Matthew 27 or Matthew 26, rather, of Jesus being betrayed by Judas. We have that opening up in verse 47, that while Jesus was still speaking, and Jesus was speaking to his disciples, namely to Peter and John, that we find were with him and James, whom he had taken with him to pray in the Garden of Gethsemane. And while Jesus was praying, the disciples could not keep their eyes open, but fall asleep. And Jesus had been praying that this cup may be taken from him, that this hour might pass from him. But the time has come. The betrayer is at hand. And as Jesus was still speaking, saying that the betrayer is at hand, Judas, identified as one of the twelve, one of the twelve apostles or disciples, uh, rather, that were picked, arrived. And with him a large crowd with swords and clubs, they've come to arrest Jesus. As we re read a little later in this passage, the clubs and swords were not needed. And Jesus did not want to be defended by a sword either from this mob or this crowd that had come to arrest him. For as we have recorded in Matthew's Gospel, he could have called twelve legions of angels to come and deliver him. But from his prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane that this cup might be taken from him, that this, from this hour he might be delivered, that we find is not the will of God. The will of God is for him to be handed over in the fulfillment of the prophets, that he might give his life as a ransom for many. So Judas arrives with him the crowd and now the betrayer in verse 48 had given a sign to the crowd saying the one I kiss is a man. Arrest him. It's fascinating. This idea of a kiss, of a holy kiss if you will, uh, was a common uh, theme and image within scripture. Uh, within this day and this time in which Jesus lived. We find throughout the writings of Paul, in Romans 16, 1 Corinthians 16, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, 1 Thessalonians 5, we also find it in 1 Peter uh, chapter 5. This idea of greeting uh, one another with a kiss. Uh, a kiss was a sign of peace, uh, a sign of intended well-being, also a sign of honor and respect to kiss one on the cheek, 
as you greeted them. It was a way of conveying uh, trust and respect between persons. And so Jesus, Judas comes and he betrays Jesus with a kiss. The kiss would state in effect, I respect and I honor you and I bring peace. So Judas' action of kissing Jesus stated, I respect you, I honor you, I come in peace. But Judas' heart was the opposite. Judas' heart was stating, I'd rather have 30 pieces of silver than to be your friend. It's interesting that Jesus says to Judas, friend, do that which you have come to do. Friend, one that I've journeyed with, one that I've trusted, one that I've shared with. In Psalm 55, we find these powerful words of one betrayed by a friend. Psalm 55, the psalmist writes in verse 12, It is not enemies who taunt me, that I could bear. It is not adversaries who deal insolently with me, I could hide from them. But it is you, my equal, my companion, my familiar friend, with whom I have kept pleasant company, we walked in the house of God together. To be betrayed by your friend and to be betrayed with a kiss carried such weight. Judas's action was that of a friend. The kiss on the cheek but his heart was so far from that we find in Luke 7 another account uh, of kissing. And it's the woman who has come and anointed Jesus' feet and kisses them. We find in Luke 7:45 that when uh, those who had invited Jesus over uh, rebuke the woman or uh, upset and bothered by the fact that this woman is kissing the feet of Jesus, Jesus says to the host that when I entered your home, you did not kiss me. The one who had invited Jesus in in Luke 7 did not respect Jesus, did not honor Jesus, did not love Jesus, and so did not offer him a kiss on the cheek. But Judas does, but he ought not to have, for it was not what was within his heart. What was in Judas's heart we find if we turn back from Matthew chapter 26, a little bit earlier, we find Matthew 26, verse 14. One of the twelve, who was called Judas, went to the chief priest and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? He paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment on, Judas began to look for an opportunity to betray him. We have just above that, in Matthew chapter 26, Jesus anointed at Bethany. And this woman with the alabaster jar of costly ointment pours it out on Jesus' head while he sat at table. The disciples saw it and were angry and said, Why this waste for this ointment could have been sold for a large sum and the money given to the poor? It's interesting in John's Gospel, chapter 12, the one who states this, is identified as Judas, who is also the keeper of the treasury, out of which he would help himself. Judas' heart was for selfish gain, for monetary gain, and the kiss, which signifies an action, I honor you, I respect you, I come in peace, was actually coming from one whose heart loved something more than Christ. The wealth to be gained 
at the expense of Christ. And Jesus says, friend, the hurt and the difficulty that this brought on the heart of Christ is unimaginable. We find in Job chapter 19, and Job was one whose friends betrayed him. In Job 19, verse 19, Job writes or states, All my intimate friends abhor me, and those whom I love have turned against me. Judas was not just betraying a human friend, as Job had been betrayed by his human friends. But Judas was betraying the Christ, the Son of God, who is our peace, as we read in Ephesians. Judas betrayed the one whom, through God, love is found. We are loved. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world but in order that the world through him might be saved. It's fascinating that in and through Christ God has, in a sense, kissed the world. He has extended peace to those who have betrayed him. And he invites us to receive that grace. And then, as the woman, to kiss Jesus in response, the pure and true heart saying, I respect, I honor, I receive what it is that you've done for me. I love you more than 30 pieces of silver. I love you more than all the riches that this world can afford. Let us search our heart this day and see if there be any part of us that betrays the love of God for us in Christ. see if our kiss be true and honorable and to see if there's still parts of the love of God that we have yet to receive. To his praise we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.